I'm going to uh, place hands on Maddie while I do this, which appropriate setting to do as such. So uh, everything that we do is a little differentiated at Spirits of French Lake. And the reason for that is kind of twofold. Uh, the first reason is because we are, you know, in Southern Indiana, we're quote unquote on the wrong side of the river to be doing these things, right? Uh, but the other reason is that we have no reason to try to imitate what the big guys are doing. They're all doing what they do. They do it extremely well. Uh, if we want to get attention, we need to be differentiated. So from the outset with the distillery itself, obviously, all of our bourbons are double pot distilled. Uh, double pot still distillation is all about the retention and concentration of flavor. Uh, you know, our motto is respect the grain. The idea is that the grain has terroir in the exact same way that grapes would have terroir if you were distilling brandy. So, you know, if we're going to distill something and we're going to say on the mash bill that there's a very particular grain in there, we want you, even after four years, eight years, 12 years, whatever the aging period ends up being, we want you to still be able to taste that grain in balance with the maturation. So the approach to this was, if you're gonna make a high rye bourbon, go all out, right? Don't mess around and say, all right, you're at 19% rye, you're high rye, you're at 20% rye, you're high rye, etc." If you're gonna do it, go extremely, extremely high rye, right? So um, with this particular mash bill, obviously, we are at 55% corn, 35 rye, and 10% malt. That's a specialty malt. We use a lot of brewer's malts. Uh, distillers malts have their place in the distillery, but there's nothing flavor-wise that you really pull from a distillers malt. It's all about converting starch into sugar for fermentation and yield. Those brewers malts, uh, in this case, uh, victory malt, give a lot of very nice, bold flavors that come through in pot still distillation. So again, we wanted to go with high rye, 35% rye. We wanted to also use that malt to give some flavor contrast. We went with that. We basically took and used two different types of yeast to ferment this. We split our fermentation into two 600 gallon fermentations. The first one we used our house yeast, which is very good at pulling out grain profiles and those grain flavors. The second fermentation of 600 gallons, we used a brandy yeast, which pulls out a lot of fruity characteristics where you get a lot of stone fruit, sort of cherry, those sort of things. Um, we then ran through a stripping still where we collected all of the alcohol that we could. Uh, that still's name is Lilith. If you followed us, you kind of understand why our stills have names, etc. The second still we distilled on was uh, Inanna. And the goal here was to make a very heavy bodied spirit in particular. So we ran that still a little hotter and a little faster than we would run if we were running a product like say Lee Sinclair. It's a little fruitier, a little sweeter. Um, we were trying to capture all the volatility of that rye coming through as well as that brewer's malt coming through. And as we made the product, we did something a little different. So we changed vapor paths on the still depending on the product we're running at the time. We also changed the ability to create natural reflux. Uh, but with this, again, being heavy bodied, straight forward from the pot still across over to the condenser, and we actually capture a little bit more tails into the hearts cut of the product. And what that does is that gives us that oily mouthfeel that you're gonna get from Maddie Gladden. It gives you that, that kind of second taste that you get even minutes after you swallow the initial product uh, that comes back to the forefront and reminds you, hey, you're drinking something. You're drinking something big and bold and something with character. Uh, we go into the barrel at very low entry proof, 105. That's an old pre-prohibition standard. The idea is that the lower you go into the barrel, you have two things that happen. Water's a better solvent on the barrel sugars than ethanol is. The second thing that happens is you're actually uh, essentially destabilizing the alcohol to some point. So you get uh, a little bit of micro oxidization. You don't age faster, you just age very differently. We're also aging in a number two charred oak barrel. Uh, that number two gives a lot of sort of toasted coconut, toasted hazelnut sort of tones that match the, the sort of fruitier style that we're making. This is bourbon uh, in a way that might seem alternative to people that are drinking nowadays, but really, if you were to go back into the 1800s, you would find a lot of farm distillers approaching distillation the same way. It's just something that was lost during industrialization that we're trying to bring back to the forefront.